This isn't meant to be a hate video, it's all personal opinion. And you're going to be surprised to hear that I won't be super harsh on most of the entries in this video. It's more so a Q&A because I get these asked to me all the time, so I'm finally going to answer. Here are 5 car mods I would never do to my car. First one, excessive interior mods or excessive interior decoration. As you can tell as someone who owns an American plastic fantastic car, I don't really care about interiors. Some people act like interiors are the greatest thing in the world. I like having a lighter interior too, so I prefer carbon accents. I think carbon trim is really cool. I like carbon fiber and interior. That's something I'm definitely still sucker for. Other than that, I don't really care for Alcantara or suede or leather because that's just extra weight to me, especially leather. Like, yeah, I could have gotten a 3LZ Corvette, but they weigh like a few, 100 more pounds. And why would I do that when, I, when cars are already getting so freaking heavy because of all the technology they have in them? As for interior decorations, some people, when they go to shows, like they'll have a Black Panther Camaro or they'll have like a Deadpool Mustang and they'll put tons of plushies, tons of figures, action figures and whatnot to decorate decorate their car. This isn't something young people do only, older people do it too. I see older people with Corvettes where they ha they hydro dip their entire interior to have skull designs and blue flames and then they put like 118 scale car figures in their engine bay on like a little rotating platform and then they have a, like three different helmets in their trunk. So a lot of people when they go to car shows they like to decorate their cars. I don't really care for that either. I just put my car, that's it, just there you go, <laughs> just look at it. And I'm gonna have to shoot some shots at my fellow weed boys because a lot of people this is gonna rustle some jimmies because they probably think i'm gonna come to their defense since i'm one of the few youtube representatives of atasha if you're someone who has body pillows anime figures or tons of plushies of like anime characters and whatnot i'm not gonna come to your defense if other people think yours is cringe i'm gonna be real with you it's probably cringe because i've been an anime fan my whole life i grew up with it but i didn't realize a lot of anime fans waifu culture like i always thought it was a joke i was like we're all just joking right yeah it's a joke and then i quickly realized it was the jokes on me because they're actually all serious like they actually like dedicating shrines to their waifus and obsessing over them and showing the world their allegiance to their waifu by buying as much merch as possible for them i've literally had people go up to me and be like why don't you have a lucina body pillow yet why don't you have a lucina figure yet like you don't have anything hanging like a little figure or keychain hanging from your rearview mirror you don't have like a metal bookmark i'm just and they just go on and on i'm like why would i do all that and they're like because you're, you need to show praise to your waifu i'm like no it's a freaking decal it's just something I want to put like I'm not a fake anime fan don't get me wrong I've watched over 250 different anime series some of which I think is pretty legit but y'all cringe just I'm not gonna come to your defense if you do stuff like that you're gonna be a social pariah to the rest of the world you're gonna be treated and exiled as such because it's kind of hard not to when you're making the rest of us cringe our pants off I always thought it was a joke I thought people who did this were just unironically doing it as a meme like haha look at how cultured I am until I realized that they actually are serious about it. I've had people trying to still convince me to say like ooh do culture you need to add Wow, that's not an overdone joke at all. It's so overdone. I'm gonna be with you. I, no, I'm putting my foot down. So I'm not against the whole idea of anime on cars, and I think it's extremely xenophobic and racist to say that anime doesn't belong on cars when the freaking Japanese build half of the cars that car guys jizz over as an Asian, literally an Asian. Some people still think I'm white for some reason and don't know that. If you freaking started watching my vlogs, you would know I'm Asian by now. It's my culture. It is my culture. I grew up on this. We're the ones who make this, and we also make the cars that you guys like. You bet your butt that if the Japanese make cars, the Japanese are allowed to put anime on cars, all right? It's extremely extremely racist to say we can't do that because you Americans take our car and you put your culture on it so why can't we take your cars and put our culture on it America's supposed to be a cultural melting pot we're supposed to embrace all the cultures of the world it's one thing to hate what someone else does it's another thing to tell them that they can't do it at all that that's a slippery slope you should know better Americans you should know better Having said that, that doesn't mean anime cars can't be cringe. That doesn't mean even good cars can't be cringe. Because even aside from anime designs, like I mentioned, there are people with normal cars that still make it cringe. Anything in the world can become cringe if you take it too far, or you just do it wrong and it just doesn't look good. Which brings me to my next subject, slap stickers. Yeah, yeah, I know someone's gonna comment, technically wraps are just a giant sticker. You know what I'm talking about, alright? Wraps and decals are more so designs and patterns. It's not the same as tons of small, tiny slap stickers. If you wanna do this, I'm not gonna judge you. Again, 
again, this is something tons of car guys do. They like showing all their mods, where their mods came from. They'll have tons of companies and tons of sponsors. I'm not a fan of having words in my car. And even slab stickers that don't have words that are just designs, I, I still can't do it. And bumper stickers that always say like people's political allegiances or religion, I, I don't get it either. I just don't like them. The fact that I don't like font on my car already eliminates like 90% of slab stickers. And then the 10% that are remaining are usually just anime tits. And I don't like those either because it detracts from my actual design. That like my actual design has words on it. And those words, I tried so hard to make them flow with the design. Look at the dragon, look at his head. See the words there? Follow it through to his body to where Lucina is. There's her name. Follow it through to the end of the tail. There's words again. That's how much thought I had to put into to integrating words into my design. When you start doing slap stickers, 100% I think they can ruin a good decal. Itasha or otherwise, if you have a decal or design on your car, even simple racing stripes, when you start putting tons of stickers everywhere, it makes the body color of your car not stand out as much. It makes the design on your car not stand out as much. It detracts the attention away from the clean overall flow of your design towards the slap stickers. And some slap stickers straight up get in the way of designs. Even professional companies, I know they have to do it for the sake of sponsorships. Like professional race cars have tons of stickers on them. And I guess that's what people are trying to mimic. It's just not something I'll ever get into. It's not something I'll ever do. I can't put tons of small individual stickers with tons of different colors and patterns and words on them. It creates color barf. That's the best way I can describe it. It makes a phenomenon known as color barf. Another model never do is big wings. There's literally someone on Instagram who's made it their sole goal in life to ask me every single post. When, it, when is the GT wing, bro? When are you gonna put a GT wing on the car? I daily drive my Corvette. I'm not going to ever put a GT wing. I also don't, I've talked about this in this video, I'll link to it here. I don't like the way wings look on cars anymore. And this is a huge transformation for me. By the way, the Miata is not getting a big wing either. So before you're like, oh, if you're not gonna put a big wing on the Corvette, put it on the Miata. No, 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 not even the Miata is gonna get a big wing. I just don't like the way wings look anymore. That's the best way I can explain it. If I ever got super into time attack or track racing, I still probably wouldn't put a big wing, even if I knew it made me faster. That's how much I've changed, I guess. My Corvette with its current set up is more than good enough for autocrossing around linear raceplex and a few other mountain running and other applications. Could I benefit from more downforce? Do I have enough horsepower to warrant downforce? Yeah, but do I want it? No, I just like the way my Corvette kind of looks the way it is. I want it to look more mean, clean, and very sleek and flowing. I think a big wing, then you have to also get a big splitter to even it out and blah 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 and I, I just don't really care for how big wings look. When I used to play video games, I used to put big wings on everything as a kid, whether it's Gran Turismo, Forza Horizon, or just need for speed especially need for speed and midnight club you know childhood me just put giant massive wings on every car he got i recently got into wong on midnight and you i could tell i'm an adult now because i haven't played a racing game as enthusiastically as i have in a while but when i got into wong on midnight i got really into maximum tune and even when i started playing that game i hated the way with wings looked in that car like the first thing i did is when i finally found out how to remove the wing off the corvette i immediately did that and i'm trying i'm currently still trying to grind for the drag kit for the corvette to get the ducktail because I just like the way ducktails and smaller spoilers look. So to everyone who's like, when's the big wing coming? Never. I just don't like wings on my cars. So if you like wings on your cars, go for it. It's just something I'm never going to do. I just like it. My specific case is when it comes to the stock aero, the engineers who designed it for my car, they know more about aerodynamics than I do. Therefore, that's what I'm going to trust. I'm going to put my faith in the way they designed my car. Monoblock wheels, I'm someone who doesn't really care too much about wheels. It just needs to be strong and lightweight, which is why I'm fine to flow formed. I can't convince myself to spend three to four to even five times more. Like for Corvette, since it basically has the same fitment as an Aventador, we basically have to deal with the companies that make wheels for actual supercars. And when you're looking for 20 by 12s that are monoblock forged, they're insanely expensive. We're talking seven grand at minimum. Uh, they can go up to 11 grand, 15 grand, even 17, 20 grand. I don't want to spend that much money on wheels. I, I just don't. <laughs> I don't care enough to spend that much on wheels. Like, yo, get 3,500, I'm set. You know, I think you could get a solid set of wheels, nice flow form set for around $3,000, $4,000. You shouldn't be taking more. Oh, I, I guess I can't stop how you guys live your life, but I don't care to lose an extra one or two pounds. Go, yeah, I get rotational mass is different than, you know, still sitting mass, but it's not worth it to me to spend five times the price to lose like two pounds off each of my wheels. So eight pounds total when I could probably just do something else that loses eight pounds. 
and mono black wheels sure they're fully forged and they're stronger than flow form but the reality is if you're track racing even and autocrossing even with a car of my power flow form is good enough a lot of my friends who race their type bars who race built miatas and whatnot or do mountain runs all the time on honda s2ks they tell me that flow form is good enough because your barrel is the one that takes most of the brunt and abuse when you're tracking it and if that's forged you're pretty set you've got a really strong wheel so you don't really need flow like forged spokes unless you just have tons of money to throw at it in which case i can't stop you and now we're on to the final entry so fake badging is the final entry because fake badging to me is the absolute epitome of that because even if you do custom bumpers or custom lights like i did i have custom lambo lights not anymore though i uh that's a long story for another time but point is even if you do stuff like that as long as you keep the actual badges on your car or if you custom badge it or even if you debadge it you're fine i'm a firm believer that debadging i'm okay with it you want a nice clean mean look you want everything to be smooth on your rear just smooth body work i'm not against it some people think that people who debadge are just trying to hide their car's status sure some people do do that but i don't find it egregious or offensive because at the end of the day even people who have the highest trim like i know gt owners from mustangs who debadge their car to troll other cars like to troll people who try to race them and they'll be like is that guy a gt or v6 and it's even funnier when they keep their stock exhaust and they get pro charged their car is super quiet so they're, they really don't know if it's a v6 or gt or not and i think that's funny custom badging that's also okay i've seen some mustangs that have the 5.0 coyote howling i've seen some that have the 3.7 cyclone and i see other people who just do like old classic like the v8 style badge on their cars and just other custom coloring too like if you want to make a corvette badge yellow or blue or you want to make your honda badge red or black even if you do the red honda badge on a car that isn't a type r i think that's okay as long as you don't put the actual type r on your car okay don't put the actual type r font it's okay to have the red badge on your car the reason i don't like fake badging so on to like fake type r or fake M cars or fake AMG cars. Let's talk about the car community. I'm gonna try to finish this on a wholesome note. The whole reason that most of us are into cars is to escape the fake people we deal with at school, work, and the rest of life. A lot of the people we talk to and meet are simply out of close proximity. We're just friends of people because we're forced to be in class together, we're forced to go to work together, and we're forced for a lot of other things. But to be a car enthusiast was a choice we actively made. It was a hobby we picked. So when you meet other people who have the same hobby, you have an opportunity to actually become friends with someone because you like them and not because you're just shoved with them out of close proximity. We use cars as a way to escape that fake life, the air of fakeness that surrounds corporate worlds, that surrounds colleges, that surrounds school, all the fake people and the fake MFs that we have to deal with. It's an escape and we're a brotherhood, we're a family. We are a family though, meme or not, we're a family. We're all just trying to escape crappiness of the rest of life. And when you try to come into our community and insult the legacy of the car you're driving, and insult your own pride, but most importantly, insult our intelligence for thinking that you can fool us, that pisses me off to no end. We're all already trying to escape the fakeness of the world as car guys, as car enthusiasts, and you're bringing it right back to us. You're trying to fake it. Don't fake badge. Be proud of what you own. Be proud of yourself and your accomplishments. If you have a V6 Mustang, I get that the V8 owners are gonna bully you, but they're gonna bully you even more if you fake badge it as a GT. Own up to it. Learn to laugh at yourself. Find your place in the car company. Accept it. Just be proud of it. Be proud of your car. Be proud of yourself. Don't fake it. Don't become another fake mother we became car guys to escape those types of people. Don't bring it back to us. 90% of non-car people don't even understand the fake badge you put on your car. To them, every Mustang's a Mustang. Every BMW is a BMW. They don't know the difference between M or AMG or GT or V6. They don't even know the difference between a Corvette Stingray and a ZR1. So when you fake badge your car, it doesn't impress 90% of non-car people because they don't recognize up badging to begin with. But the 10% that do recognize up badging are car enthusiasts. And we're the ones who will call you out on it. I hope my outlook on that has made people realize the pride that I take as a car enthusiast and the pride that we should all take as car enthusiasts in accepting each other but also realizing that we shouldn't be fake to each other. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I answered some questions you guys constantly keep asking me. If you enjoy cars and car content, make sure to subscribe. If you haven't kept up with my vlogs, make sure to subscribe as well. I've been doing a lot of performance mods lately that I will be making videos for soon. Other than that, thank you for watching and see you all next time. Bladed Angel out.